For more on the story, we can bring in Keith Cowering, editor at nasawatch.com. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. How is Elon Musk's SpaceX changing the space race? Well, among other things, it's made it cheaper. Uh, these launches used to be done either with uh, expensive uh, rides that were bought on a Soyuz flight or prior to that a space shuttle, which could have cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So these things are down down in the $100 million range, which, uh, well, means uh, if you spend more money, that means you can do more launches with the same amount of money. Now, you know, Thomas Pesquet, the French astronaut, will be taking command during the first month at the International Space Station. What does that mean exactly? Well, this is first of all, this is the first time that a, a spacecraft has taken off like this with uh, a NASA astronaut, actually two, a Japanese astronaut and a European astronaut. And uh, for Thomas to be in charge of the International Space Station is another interesting thing as well. It just seeks to constantly reinforce the truly international nature of the space station. And as a matter of fact, it's almost like uh, routine that we have yet another first person doing it for the first time since there are so many countries involved. You know, Russia says they want to build, build their own international space station like an alternative. What do you make of that? Well, space stations cost money, and uh, uh, Mr. Rogozin was uh, addressing his government the other day saying that they don't really have a lot of money, and they need to pick the things they are best at and not just do everything else. So uh, if they decide that a space station is the preeminent thing that they want to focus the resources on, then that may be where they go. However, they also want to go to the moon and do all the other stuff that all the other countries do. So I think uh, I don't think the decision has been made yet, and the Russians tend to uh, – say these things in springtime just to get people thinking of what they want uh, everybody else to be doing. Now, you've previously worked at NASA. How critical are these next, next hours, these 20 odd hours, if you will, until uh, docking at the International Space Station? Well, when I worked at NASA, we had space shuttles. So pretty much you had six or seven people in there, and they were sort of bumping into each other, and they had a lot of things to do. Uh, but this spacecraft is much more automated, and I don't want to say they're just looking out the window, but they're probably just looking out the window. Uh, it is uh, capable of pretty much doing everything itself, although the crew can take over in case of an emergency. So uh, I, they're probably just relaxing right now. And, you know, between now and docking on the at the International Space Station, how in touch would they be with the crew on the ground in NASA? At this point, everybody can talk to everybody else simultaneously. I mean, we have such quite a amazing infrastructure in place now so that uh, Mission Control in Houston, in uh, Moscow, uh, in Europe, uh, inside the Dragon, inside the space station, everybody can talk to everybody else. Fascinating stuff, Keith Cowering. Thank you very much for joining us on the program today. My pleasure.